What's up, everybody? So I actually like just finished this league like 15 minutes ago. I uh, was kind of just messing around, fired up league between uh, some calls, had a little spare time and decided to run with it. And uh, so I just like threw up some games and ended up jumping into this league and all of a sudden looked up and realized it was like 3-0 or something and thought like, oh, well. I guess we'll see how it finishes out, and lo and behold, we uh, we finished up the 5-0. Let me bump on over to... There we go. Uh, so this is the list that I ran through with. Some of the changes from the list that we've run recently uh, cut down to... Tw or, yeah. Ah, cut down to 19 lands from 20 because I cut the third Kroxa and the fourth Drown in the Lock and the fourth Ledger Shredder. Uh, in place of the 20th land, fourth Shredder, fourth Drown, third Kroxa, I ran four Dragon's Ridge Channelers uh, just to see because people have been asking left and right, like, oh, why'd you cut the Channelers? Like, is it making the unfair matchup worse? Well, who knows? We're going to try. Uh, so that was the only differences I made in the main. Oh, and cut the third lightning bolt for the fourth unholy heat. So was, the reason for the bolt to the heat was bolt has been killing less and less of what I actually cared about killing. Been seeing a lot more like scam with an undying effect on a fury turn one bolt misses that. Uh, I've seen more like amulet titan bolt misses just about everything in that deck. Uh, heats a lot better against Merc Tide, against Merc Tide itself, and against Ledger Shredder. So I just wanted to to go up there, still on like the two, yeah, two Terminate. Why can I not speak today? Two Terminate, two Croaks, uh, kept three of the four Shredders, four Ragavan, four Thoughtseize, four Shadow, the Spell Pierce, the main. In the sideboard, uh, I went up to three Fluster Storm. I was kind of thinking like, all right, what's my best card in like the Rhinos matchup outside of obviously engineered explosives because it doesn't really have that much overlap and it's always fluster storm like fluster storm beats force of negation. It beats mystical dispute. Um, the only thing it loses to is your opponent just like hitting their sixth land drop and so be it on that one. So went up a fluster storm, uh, went up a dress down Cut Alpine Moon completely because I went up a dress down and cut the. Uh, what was the last one? I forgot what I cut for the Fluster Storm. It might have been like a one of Fatal Push in the sideboard. Can't remember. Not important. Uh, and then I cut the two Soul Guide Lanterns for two unlicensed hearses. Every time I played like a value graveyard deck, I really wanted hearse. Didn't have it. Kept having like. Uh, counter spells or soul guide lantern. So threw a hearse back in there just to try it out and see what happens. Uh, so that's about it for the list. Let's go ahead and start running through the matchups. Doesn't like that monitor. Let's move some stuff around real quick. It's all going all over the place. Now, is this one, and there we go. All right, so lost the first die roll, unfortunate. As always, winning the die roll is uh, really, really, really nice in a format where Ragavan is still legal. Uh, opening hand, we're against a Kahira deck, so it's either Elementals or, like, Blue-White Control. Uh, every now and then you'll see, like, a, a what's it called, Charbelcher opponent with Kahira, but that's kind of whatever. My hand is really good if I hit a second land, and I'm on the draw with, like, a Thoughtseize on turn one, so I'm going to give it a shot. If I didn't have like three straight plays I could make off one mana or two, and if I find a land third and 
like the first three draw steps. Uh, then I would throw this back, but I've got some stuff to do. And, you know, there we go. We hit the second land, so it's all good. Check out their hand. So it is blue-white control. Uh, Odawara, it's a little bit annoying, whatever. See a fire and ice, solitude. Uh, just going to go ahead and take the fire and ice, the thing that they can cast right now. Let them start filling their graveyard for Drowning the Lock. And now if we get to Thoughtseize again, we can like go ahead and get down Shadow and plan to Expressive Iteration next turn to maybe find some more lands. Uh, so we see they picked up a Leyline Binding. We'll go ahead and take that because if I don't, then they can probably just fetch up like a Soul Tide Triome here. And Leyline Binding my Shadow for one mana. And I really don't want that to happen. If they do decide to like add Kahira to their hand. And evoke Solitude to deal with the Shadow on turn three. That's fine. Like they're going down two cards. They lose Solitude. Lose Kahira. And I get to untap with an Expressive Iteration. So I'll take that trade. They do not uh, cast the Solitude, but our expressive iteration kind of sucks. Like, we hit another iteration, which is nice, but I really would have liked to hit, like, a fetch land just to get a little more damage in, but it doesn't always work that way. So now I know they have Solitude, Kahira, Memory Deluge, Odawara, and an Unknown. So, like, their hand is fairly stacked right now. Uh, leading off on iteration, because if they, like, cast the memory deluge, then it taps them out. If they Odawara or something, it taps them out. They would have had to have top decked, like, a counter spell exactly. Uh, find a land, find a bobble. And we're just going to try to, like poke in for a little bit of damage. We have Drown in the Lock, so if our opponent's planning on, like, uh, Memory Deluge, untap hard cast of Solitude, we could interact with that. But they're just going to go for it. So we're just going to let it resolve. I could try to Drown in the Lock the Solitude, but I'd rather Drown in the Lock the Memory Deluge. Because, like, their hand's not that good. They've got some okay pieces, but it's not like anything absolutely crazy. They're ways off of getting back this uh, memory deluge, which they actually decide to just play out the Odawara. So that's even one less thing that I have to worry about. So now I know their hand is counterspell unknown and they're drawing into a hallowed fountain. down Shredder, and we're just going to add uh, Giganta here, because I know if I cast the Expressive Iteration, they're going to counterspell it, so instead we'll just, like, take our opportunity to uh, to get Giganta. They have a Shark Typhoon. Not going to lie, I did not really have a uh, Shark Typhoon on my radar there. Like, it's not bad, because I've got Unholy Heat and Terminate, but it's kind of like, eh. We'll just go ahead and kill the shark. Uh, our opponent doesn't have, like, a Hall of the Storm Giants out, so I don't feel the need to keep Terminate around. Lightning Bolt's just going to, like, let me get a little bit faster of a clock. Archmage's Charm to draw to. Obviously, if they'd gone to, like, steal my channeler, I probably would have had to have bolted it. But. Or tried to bolt it. Maybe they counterspelled the bolt, and I get to resolve a uh, iteration. Here, for the most part, I'm just trying to get them to use that counterspell. Um, okay, here it's gone, because they exiled it earlier. Like, I don't think they're going to use it on just a lightning bolt, but I want to resolve my expressive iteration. And the only way that's going to happen is if I get them to use their counter spell. And then 
surprisingly, my opponent just takes seven here. So we'll fire off the iteration because we get the connive trigger and the surveil. And I'm just like shocked that they're letting so much of this resolve. Keep shadow around so my opponent can't just like Archmage's charm, steal it, and kill me. That would kind of suck, but they're just going to go to flashback memory deluge. That's fine if they want a supreme verdict or something. I've got a couple threats in the back pocket, uh, but they just scoop it up. So more than likely that uh, memory deluge just didn't see anything that impactful. So we'll take it. Game number two, sideboarding against blue-white control. Uh, board out like a whole bunch of the spot removal. Anything that only hits creatures is definitely coming out. And then I'm boarding out most of the stuff that hits like planeswalkers because ultimately like if planeswalkers resolve, you're in a much worse position. Uh, so like trying to kill them after they've resolved and done their thing is usually a lot less effective than stopping them from coming down in the first place. Uh, and then I always bring in an engineered explosives against blue white control because of like chalice of the void. If you have Colligan's command, that's sometimes a little bit better, but EE is an answer to chalice. I think is like pretty important because you don't want to get locked out but it's not so important that I want to have a bunch of EEs in. But the first one, I think, has got like some value. Then board in like Spell Pierces, uh, Fluster Storms, the E Kaito. Is that everything? Yeah. Especially Kaito. That is great here. Uh, no lands. Ship it. Good hand. Uh, I think I end up throwing back the bobble because it's just like... Oh, no. I was going to say the bobble because it's like the least uh, interactive card that I've got. Go for the Thoughtseize, because I don't want to cast uh, Ragavan and then have my opponent just, like, untap and answer it, and I lose, like, one of my best available cards. So instead, we cast the Thoughtseize, which we get to nab a Fire and Ice. Opponent Shocks and uh, Hallowed Fountain. So, like, I have to assume this is a bluff. Um... They didn't actually draw the counter spell. And then Solitude, get rid of. Uh, Supreme Verdict is fantastic for me. So it looks like they're just relying on like counter spell, or not counter spell, memory deluge to get them back into it. The Ledger Shredder on top. I don't really care for a Ledger Shredder because I'm not double spelling after it. So it's more than likely just going to be a two mana one three. And I think I can do better than that. Cycle Shark Typhoon for one. Seems good. See a Leyline Binding on top. Seems slightly less good for the home team. Uh, opponent only has five cards in their yard, so I cannot stop this Leyline Binding. Get that out of the way. Get that's gone. That's gone. That's gone. We've got a Relic of Progenitus coming off the top. So I kind of have to counter the Relic, because if I don't, then the Drowning Lock's dead anyway. Then Memory Deluge is their last card in hand, so we're definitely going to try to counter that. And just look for something relevant. Uh, we see 
Shark Typhoon off the top for them. Uh, luckily, they don't have a sixth land, so they can't hard cast the Shark Typhoon yet. Cycle it, get another Shark. So you remember when I said we bring in EE for Chalice? Well, I actually meant we bring in EE for Shark Tokens, but occasionally you get to like nab a Chalice as well and feel good for a second. It's not really what it's there for, but you know. Gotta make do. Pass a turn, go for the upkeep memory deluge, which I was representing drowning the lock, so like this is fine. Take for eight. And we'll go ahead and play out our most expensive spell. Uh, that way, if opponent does like verdict here, we do get to untap with uh, Channeler. Finding a drown in the locks really, really nice here. They would like to steal our channeler. I would not like them to steal our channeler. All the storm giants is a bit uh bit annoying. Then haul into solitude. So we can kill that. Uh I saw a channeler on top, which is like fine to chump block a turn. I really don't like this play because like chump blocking a turn doesn't actually get you closer to winning the game. So I probably should have just uh, milled this and looked for like a kill spell, another drown in the lock. Um, or something, maybe like a shadow that meant they couldn't attack with the hull here. This is like just buying time to my next draw anyway. But it does give them one more turn, so. All right, so we're gonna take that. Come on, Moto. You can do it. Take that because, like, I need my next draw to be good anyway. Why are we riding? There's some program open that's, uh, Discord open while we're trying to do a voiceover. All right, pretty sure we just draw dead. Yep, so scoop that. Go to game three. So going to game three on the play against blue white control. I don't think I really change anything with sideboarding. Nope, all looks the same. Deal our Pokemon. Would love to have functional mana in a hand with Ragavan, Kaito, Thoughtseize, and Death Shadow, but whatever. Throw it back. Uh, pretty good six. So Kaito's like one of the really, really good cards in this matchup if we could land it. The rest of the hand's a little bit funky, but if I throw back Channeler, then I always have the chance for, like, turn one Thought Seize, turn two Thought Seize Shadow, and then if I find a land on three and get to attack with the Shadow, then I can play the Kaito, and I'm, like, reasonably good chance of uh stealing a game here. 
that's what we're going to roll with. Salt Seas, and we see a really slow, clunky hand out of them. So let's just go ahead and take the solitude uh, because if I do get to like, if they top deck another solitude and I thought sees that one, then I should be able to get an attack in with shadow and hopefully I can be in a position to resolve Kaito afterwards. But if not, if they don't draw another solitude, then I can just like take the Archmage's charm and go from there. Unfortunately, they find Leyline Binding, which means I have to take that, because if I don't, same thing as game one. They can just get like a Jeskai Triome off this, and then a Sultai Triome off the other fetch, and go ahead and exile the Shadow. And I really need this Shadow to get an attack in to get Kaito live. All right. Let's break this down real quick. I intentionally do not play the fetch land here. The reason being, if I fetch and shock and hit my opponent for six and play Kaito and draw a card, they get to fetch, untap, play land, steal my shadow, the shadow lives. That's not good for me. Uh, here, if I attack for three, put them down to 16, and then second main play the Kaito, they would have to fetch and shock and then untap, fetch again to steal the shadow and keep it alive. So, like, they're doing the damage for me without me having to do the damage to myself. And me doing the damage to myself doesn't help me in the long run if they steal the shadow. So, all I would be doing is damaging myself for no reason whatsoever. Like, damage myself to give them a shadow or the possibility of playing a shadow. So like if they want to fetch and shock or fetch shock, fetch again and steal the shadow, uh, so be it. But like, I'm going to take my part out of this, my damage part out of this. That three extra damage, like doesn't matter. They have the answer to shadow. We have a kite. So just like we said, they get their triomes, untap, find Archmage's charm, steal it. They don't get a shadow. So good for us. We find a fourth land, which means we can play Ledger Shredder, hold up Drown in the Lock. If we didn't find a land, we'd probably tick up Kaito first. But because I found a land and I know I don't want to discard the Drown in the Lock, then Kaito is just going to make a ninja token. So if they do answer one of my threats, I still get to attack and draw a card next turn. And opponent misses their land drop and goes for the second main. I really thought about uh, Drown in the Locking this but I really want to save the Drown and Lock for uh, something a little more impactful. Because, like, the best thing they can find off this, if they're main phasing an Archmage's Charm, is a land. And a finding a land means that 50% of their draws aren't actually impacting the board in any way. And if they're not impacting the board, then... Back in for a couple. Pick up our Kaito. Find another Ledger Shredder. Just going to add Gigantha. I don't really want to like commit more to the board in the space of Supreme Verdict if I don't have to. We shock in Steam Vents. They do not have double white, so I'm not at risk of Solitude. And they go for an end of turn dress down. All right, sure. I don't believe that does anything that I'm like super caring about. And we got, it's 
cycle a shark typhoon for a one one shark sure i still get kaito drawing a card so that's that's okay with me that another ledger shredder because i kind of want to keep this channel around as like a cheaper way uh to get a sizable thread on the board ledger shredder like needs some some help getting up to par unlock this so if they counter spell I do get ledger shredder triggers iteration is pretty good I can ditch some of this expensive stuff they can have the teferi iteration finds a ragavan which means we get a ledger shredder trigger I thought about attacking both at the Teferi uh, and kind of decided, like, you know, I'm getting my Kaito draw regardless. Don't be greedy. Play out Shadow. I don't want to go down to four because I've seen Fire and Ice in their deck, and I don't want to be dead to double Fire and Ice. Opponent's going to give me a chance to spell Tears of Memory Deluge on their main phase. I have a hard time passing that one up, right? So Ledger Treader ditches uh, Dragon's Raid Channeler, mainly because it's just like the thing that gives me the least value up front. Like I've got Ledger Shredder and I'm dashing a Ragavan, then I've got like Flusterstorm Pierce and whatnot, plus a Kaito draw. Uh, so I think the thing I don't need is like a vanilla threat. And with Death Shadow, if my opponent decides to solitude that, like I'm thrilled. Yeah, put me back at nine life or 13 life where I've got a huge life total advantage. Let's do it. <laughs> All for it. But uh, yeah, Kaito looking really, really good there. We'd be going to turn nine with seven cards in hand and a Kaito on the board, plus a couple of threats. Uh, a little unfortunate that we couldn't find a Croaks at any point that game. But as you see, we would have the mana to escape Croaks even with basic island. Which is what I'm hoping to see in these matchups like. Basic Island, great against Blood Moon, not so great at casting Kroxa, but if we can cast the Kroxa anyway, then it's kind of fine. We just get like all upside. So match number two, we're on the play. Good hand on the play. Just very proactive. Ragavan and to kill your thing and to something. All right, so Steam Vents, Mishra's Bobble, and Holy Heat means 97% chance we're against Merc Tide. The scourge of my magic career. They hit me with a Ragavan. So I'm going to go to my upkeep, cast the Unholy Heat. Uh, if I see something wa I want and they counter this, then I'll decide if it's actually worth it or if I want to spell pierce. If I see something I want and they don't counter this, then I just get to draw the thing. If I see something I don't want, well, then I'm fetching anyway, and spell pierce looks great. So, see a ledger shredder, but kind of decide ultimately I don't want the ledger shredder. Opponent goes for the bolt on my face. I say, yeah, cool, you got it. Want to play my shadow? Dash Ragavan. So, this is the line I want to get myself to take more often. Just like, cool, dash your Ragavan. Like, what are you going to hit that I really care that much about? Especially in a spot like this where I've got Spell Pierce up. So, 
let's hit you. We'll add Gigantha. We're not dead to double bolt. We'll attempt to counter that. They have like an unholy heat. Sucks, but I do get to untap with Gigantha if they do. Uh, it turns out they do not. So if I'm assuming they don't have an unholy heat, then I'm going to keep playing my stuff as if they don't have one and then they find one. So <sighs> modern, right? But at least they're like really mana screwed. So. Letting the board with dudes is pretty good, too. Round two, sideboarding against Murktide. Uh, with the Channeler version, I'm boarding out Channelers pretty aggressive in the matchup because if you have a threat that has to attack into your opponent's Murktide and Ledger Shredder, that can be really awkward if you don't have, like, a removal spell on hand. Um, Drown and Lock's also pretty awkward against Murktide. I should have brought in Kaito. I think I decided because I was on the draw, I'd leave in one thought seize over the Kaito and then bring Kaito in on the play. Um, and then I brought in Flusterstorm, but no spell pierce. And the reason for that was I feel like Flusterstorm answers their answers a lot better. Uh, obviously, it's worse against like Blood Moon and. Um, Blood Moon and Unlicensed Hearse. But if I'm boarding out like Channelers and Drown in the Locks anyway, then those cards I don't care about quite so much. Uh, bringing in like Terminates, Hearses, one of the EEs, two of the Dress Downs. Let's try to be pretty reactive on the draw. Yuck. Less yuck. All right. So we're just keeping as much removal and stuff as we can. We want to deal with things as they show up. So kill the Ragavan. Which means our opponent probably has a Ragavan to dash. It's like whenever your opponent plays a turn one Ragavan, you kill it on your main phase. There's always a second one. Just religiously. They're going to spend their treasure to unholy heat the Ragavan, which means I'm going to try for this Fluster Storm. That way, hopefully, my opponent doesn't have like a land, another one ra mana removal spell, and another, or and the, the Ragavan that they already dashed. Decide to dash, and this is what I was talking about with taking this line of just take it. Because, like, again, what are they hitting that I really care about outside of, like, a removal spell for my Ragavan? But if they hit a removal spell for my Ragavan, then I just get to untap with Shadow anyway. But instead, I hit land. Take more shadows, especially since I have terminate. So if my opponent does play like a Merc Tide or something, I just get to uh, kill it. Speak of the devil. And then I should have played my land first. Wait, no, they were empty handed. It didn't matter. That's why I played the Terminate. If they had a card in hand, then I should have played the land first. Play around Spell Pierce. But they didn't, so I just get to Terminate, and then I would attack, play the other Shadow, or Shock in, attack, play the Shadow. Because my opponent can't hit um, Expressive Iteration Double Bolt with, like, Triple Island out. So, yeah. 2-0. Game three, uh, we are on the play. Nice little change of pace. You know, they say being on the play is good. We say blasphemy. Uh, but this is a pretty good hand on the play, right? Uh, 
accidentally click the ledger shredder, realize my mistake, play the Ragavan. Uh, so it looks like back to back Merc tied. I want to get the Thoughtsies off more than the ledger shredder. Let me see. What's really not a very good hand. Um, like double Ragavan into what's about to be a Delirious Dragon's Rage Channeler plus a Ledger Shredder is pretty good. Uh, their Ledger Shredder's a little annoying. And I end up taking their Ledger Shredder because I really want a double spell um, sometime in the next turn. So... Maybe it was greedy. Maybe not. Then we will get a basic in case of main deck Blood Moon. Uh, but of course, that means that my opponent has, in fact, drawn the counter spell in the one draw step there. I decided to just hold up Lightning Bolt instead of going for the Thought Seas. Uh, unfortunately, I think I knew they had the land, actually. So, I, again, that situation where I should just Thought Seas and, like, let the Ragavan dash. Because I just stopped the Merc Tide, and that's kind of, like, the more important thing. But I got a little, a little ahead of myself. His second Merc Tide, second Ragavan. Decide to take um, the second Merc Tide so that if I do find a way to deal with this Merc Tide in the next like two draws, then I can just fight through the Ragavan. Probably should have been the Shadow because like the only thing I really care about finding at this point is Terminate or Unholy Heat. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Now, obviously, I'm pretty glad to have a shadow because I get to kill the Merc Tide, uh, play out a shadow that their their Merc Tide has to chump block. I know their last card in hand is Merc Tide. His main deck terminates, really putting in some work. So they bobble and then tap themselves out to play a Merc Tide. We say. Cool, that Merc Tide is on chump block duty. Maybe we find like a bolt. Nope. All right. Don't know what you have to get out of here. Game two. Sideboarding. Kind of just how I said last time, except this time I took out the fourth thought season and brought in the Kaito. But everything else I think is the same. Uh, so I only brought in two Fluster Storm, brought in the second Spell Pierce instead. Kind of messing around with my sideboarding there. Kind of what happens when you're not, yeah, not like really planning on playing a league. <coughs> Just managed to anyway. All right, Kaito's a good pickup. Decided to go ahead and throw out the bobble because, like, I need to find more interaction. Uh, holding, or, like, playing the Ledger Shredder into Counterspell or uh, Lightning Bolt and trying to surveil, like, doesn't really do me a lot. I will play the Swamp to play around uh, Blood Moon. Ragavan. Even though they get a Shredder trigger, like, I gotta go ahead and cast the Consider. Can't just give up a free draw spell for the sake of a, a Shredder trigger. And uh, 
discard the expressive iteration, happen to hit the unholy heat. So a little bit lucky there. And by a little bit lucky, I mean like a lot of bit lucky. My opponent plays a Merc Tide for a Lux Demolite. Dead. Really hoping to find a Terminate. Instead, only found an unholy heat. I think it really mattered if I played the Ragavan or not. Yeah. Draw for turn. And pretty sure just go for like the the upkeep dress down. Uh just to try to find another unholy heat or a terminate. Uh, probably a few turns in there I could have played a little more optimally. Uh, for example, it might have been better on turn three to just, like, play out Kaito and make a dude or play out Kaito and draw and discard instead of dashing Ragavan and playing their consider. Uh, just because, like, getting a Planeswalker down is super valuable on its own. Uh, that would have also gotten me closer to like more terminates, croaks, uh, unholy heat, whatever the case may be. And since they were tapped out, they wouldn't be able to counter it or interact with it on their turn. So they'd have to go back to mine. Might be able to find something else or find something else there. So I think that was like a turn where I could have been more mana efficient. Like, I got lucky that I was able to Ragavan into a Consider, Consider into an Unholy Heat, but obviously that's not a reliable play by any means. So if I don't have a reliable play, I probably should just hedge for, like, the consistent play, which is Kaito Mega Token. So... Let him go there. Hope our opponent doesn't have a Ragavan. We could have Lightning Bolt. That would be a little unfortunate, but kind of want to get the Shredder down. If they have like an Holy Heat, it looks a lot better to go ahead and get it down. Also a little bit wary of Blood Moon, so I'm hoping that if they do have a Blood Moon, that this uh, basic swamp kind of dissuades that a little bit. Uh, obviously, if the Bloodstained Mire was a blue fetch, I'd feel a lot better. But at the moment, at least, I can get Broxa online if I find a fourth land. Here, I'm just, like, not tapping off of my interaction. Playing another Ledger Shredder doesn't really do, any do anything for me, especially if I play a Ledger Shredder into, like, a Merc Tide and they have a Counterspell. Then if I don't find my fourth land and they Counterspell my first play, then I'm just kind of, like, sitting here doing nothing. So instead, we're just going to make our opponent's mana very inefficient. I'm still just like not gonna play out this um this croaks into a counter spell because that's very very mana inefficient for me because I would go croaks uh if they counter spell that gives them delirium so they can just untap and like unholy heat my ledger shredder there you go but if I go for some cheaper threat then I get to pass and still hold up like interaction. Almost like we called that. Get the steam vent. Ah, 
the, to have the blue to play the ledger shredder plus now i've got uh double blue or double red black to cast my two terminate so if they do find like a merc tide and a counter spell uh, i've got interaction for that just need a whole bunch of ragavans Terminate with the bobble draw on the stack. I knew I wanted to attempt to terminate on my turn, so it makes more sense to like do it with the bobble draw on the stack so that uh, I don't give them a ledger shredder trigger if they just haven't found a counter spell but do. Like, I want a ledger shredder trigger, so. that cool here's a shadow and honestly like i know that croxa itself didn't uh win me this game uh but i feel like the threat of croxa did a lot to make my opponent mana inefficient we're casting a bunch of one and two mana spells and they're just kind of holding up counter spell or they were earlier holding up counter spell uh expecting croxa and we just kind of got to like keep doing our thing because i mean there's a reasonable chance that if we got down croxa they just wouldn't be able to do anything Here, decide to escape Croxa first so that if our opponent has like a counter spell, unholy heat, or worse yet, like unholy heat and then something dead, uh, then maybe they have to make an awkward decision on what to interact with. Spell snare. Okay. And then they died of shadow attack. So. No idea what their other card was. Like, maybe it was um, something to interact with Shadow, but, like, we'd still just get to draw, discard, or draw since we've tacked now and have Terminate for any threat, get back Croxa, and if they can't, like, deal with Croxa, we get to get it back again. And, you know, after after enough Croxas, eventually your opponent's not going to be in the game. On to match number four. Sitting at 3-0, and oh, we win a die roll. No lands. Uh, it's very, very slow hand. Uh, if it's my third Merc Tide opponent in the row, it might be okay. But because I don't know if the Unholy Heats are good or not, I'm kind of fine throwing one of those back and going from here. Crap. Alright, so Rhinos. Looks like Rhinos, not Rhinos. No Rhinos at all. Living in. Okay, so at least these draws we have off Bobble are protected from the Grieve. So, like, they do get to nab our expressive iteration, which sucks, but maybe we can find something to get out of there. Drown in the Lock's really, really good. Uh, since they're not living ending this next turn, I kind of want to just, like, get down Ragavan and not have to put mana into it anymore. This way, I can just hold up Drown in the Lock from now on. And if I find another Drown in the Lock, I can hold up Double Drown. Where if I'm dashing Ragavan every turn, I'm not going to be able to hold up Double Drown for a while. Like, I really don't think that two mana for not dashing earlier is going to matter. Either you're going to stop like the living ends or they're going to find a second one and kill you. And at the moment, it's looking like we're only going to be able to stop one living end. 
that they just have another grief. So we're going to go for the Drown in the Lock in case they don't have the Cascade spell. And they go to our upkeep and cast the Cascade spell. So scoop to that. <laughs> Double griefed. Double grief, and they had two Cascade spells because they had Violent Outburst plus the uh, Shardless Agent that we saw at the top of the head or top of the deck. So for the most part, like double grief, double Cascade spell, you're going to have a really tough time beating that. Uh, sideboarding. Board out like a Kroxa because it doesn't really matter, but I kind of like keeping one in case the game goes super, super long. Uh, it can just be like a repeatable bolt. Board in the three spell or three fluster storms, two spell pierces. So three fluster storm, two spell pierce, uh, the two unlicensed hearses. And I ended up boarding in a couple dress downs here, kind of because I had more stuff I wanted to board out. Uh, but also because these like grief heavy versions. Maybe if you're able to get to turn three and like dress down a grief, then that can protect your counter spell and you just got to beat a three, two menace, which isn't the worst thing in the world. So I decided to kind of try that line. It's not really something that I've tried heavily before, but I figure I might as well. Uh, hand with Ragavan, spell pierce on the play, plus the dress down. So I get to try out my idea of like protecting. Uh, my interaction from grief. Play out Ragavan. Finding second land is nice, even if the second land happens to be one that uh, does not work too well with our shadow. Luster Storm's a really good pickup. So now I'm kind of on the just like hold up any interaction I can plan. So if my opponent goes for a grief, I can dress down and then like bolt the grief. Um, I can have Fluster Storm and Spell Pierce for an actual Cascade spell. <coughs> so... I think I can make it through like a cascade spell or two. I decide to go for the dress down second main phase so that I get the surveil off of this, the channeler or the dress down sacks on their instep. So I do get to untap with like hopefully a three, three channeler plus a uh, ragavan. If they do go for a grief, second main phase it just sticks around and if they go for a living in on their second main phase i still have interaction it plays a little bit worse into grief next turn but i'm kind of just hoping that i'll find some stuff and be able to interact a little bit better and i could also bolt them give the uh, Channeler Delirium, which I probably should have bolted on my upkeep. Yeah, definitely should have bolted on my upkeep. Would have ended up flipping over the Ragavan, which didn't really matter. Also, really, really surprised that they went for that mystical dispute on the ledger shredder. I feel like the shredder like doesn't really matter here. If you're losing, you're losing regardless. Um, so, in case you're unsure of like what to use when, if your opponent cascades on their turn and they don't have mana open, spell pierce is like 99% of the time your better choice because Flusterstorm protects you on your turn from Violent Outburst plus Force of Negation. So, that's why we spell Pierce. And now I know my opponent's dead. Because they've 
I've already played their land. They're passing the turn. I can go for Lightning Bolt, do it on their turn so that they can't force of negation. Because I would very likely, like, not bluster storm a force of negation. So. I play Scoop, and we're on to game three. Think I had anything major. I might have boarded in one less dress down. Yeah. So I kept or brought the fourth iteration back in and boarded out the uh, second dress down. Uh, Pretty bad seven. Think I can do better. Like I've got a fluster storm, which is nice, but I I'm kind of coming to the conclusion. I say coming to the conclusion. Like, I've been on the conclusion for a, a while that one piece of interaction just cannot beat living in between grief, force negation, mystical dispute. Uh, so I kind of got to ship that back. So anytime I'm drawing counter spells here is good. Uh, I didn't want to get Blood Crypt because if I got Blood Crypt, I couldn't cast one of my counter spells off of it. But I wanted to fetch because if I find another fetch land off the top, I want to be able to play a turn two shadow. So I ended up having to go with another copy of uh, Watery Grave, which is a little bit awkward if I find like red cards, but my red cards aren't that good in the matchup anyway. And I still have like another draw because even if I found a red source there, I wouldn't be casting expressive iteration. I'd be holding up these. So at the moment, the watery graves are fine. And we're just going to keep passing and holding up two removal spells or two counter spells. Hope that if our opponent does have like a grief, we can fight over it. what we said if they're cascading on their turn and they don't have mana go for the spell pierce sure as heck not about to fire off a drown in the lock to kill a shardless agent but we will play a shadow here and keep up our double counter spells uh, so now if our opponent has like land and they go for uh, cascade spell we can still fluster storm Pass through. And again, I'm not tapping off of two counter spells because the last thing I want is for me to go for like expressive iteration and my opponent cast a violent outburst or like expressive iteration and I miss a land and my opponent casts a violent outburst and then untaps and plays uh, another cascade spell and I'm just kind of screwed. Uh, this was a, a kind of tough decision. Um, I kind of decided like, I don't have the mana to go ahead and use my fluster storm and hold up like double interaction next turn. So I might as well hope that they don't have some piece. Either they don't have a mystical dispute or a force of negation for this drown, or they don't have a second cascade spell. Um, and if they have both, I'm just kind of like in a world of trouble. They shock in, so that means they're, in my opinion, playing around spell pierce. I could go for Fluster Storm here. Probably the safer option. So I was probably supposed to, but I really wanted to just like save my cheap counter as long as I could. And since I picked up this Lightning Bolt, now I can like, if they play a Cascade spell, like land Cascade spell, then I can Lightning Bolt them and uh, Fluster Storm, and they can't pay for Storm. So. 
feel like I should be okay at this point. But really that whole like turn sequence there hinged on my opponent not having something for a turn or not having everything, I should say. And I just had to kind of bank on that so that I could get to a turn where I could double spell, like cast the expressive iteration, hold up the fluster storm. And we got a little bit lucky there, but you know what they say, better lucky than good. So 4-0, on to match number five. Lose the die roll. Boo. Opening hand's reasonable. Uh, we've got threats. We've got interaction. We've got Ragavan. And Rhinos. Woo. Woo. No. Play off the Ragavan. Because not really anything else we can do. Luckily, opponent is on a mulligan, so perhaps they're missing something in here that's important. We could bolt ourselves and play a shadow, but even if I bolt myself, the shadow's still dead to like another dead and gone, so I don't really want to do that. So let's see if they have a turn three cascade spell. BD. Play out our shadow because if our opponent does have like a fire and ice or dead and gone, we can bolt ourselves, outgrow that. Pretty uh, reasonable hand out of them. Side so iteration because I'd really rather find like a drown in the lock to fight over this. Uh, Footballs. Which, of course, you know, if they've got a footballs on board, it means they probably have another cascade spell on top, right? Like, Oh, looky there. <laughs> More rhinos. So opponent's going to get to untap and drop four rhinos on the battlefield. Fire off the Violent Outburst in response to the fetch. Sure, we already knew about that. So we're going to shock in, go ahead and kill this Brazen Borrower. Save that life. Now we've got a little bit of a, a choice to make. Uh, we can't escape the Kroxa because we're just dead on board. We can play out the Ragavan, and if our opponent does something to attack all out, then we can go like shadow on a rhino, heat a rhino, terminate a rhino, take four, go to one, and we've got a lethal shadow on the crack back. Uh, we want the we want to know a little more information before we make any sort of decision. So we see fire outlet, cool. Uh, we cannot attack with the shadow because we're not forcing lethal. So even though it's fairly likely that our opponent would block. Um, it's not a guarantee and I don't like making that attack if it's not a guarantee they don't block because if they don't block, we just die on the crackback. Nothing we can do about it. Um, if I had a fetch land and could bluff, then I would make the attack because there's always the chance that our opponent just like gang blocks and we get to go like, all right, heat one, terminate one, kill the other two in combat. That feels pretty good. All right. Flinch time. Opponent cracking Fiery Islet means that uh, they're probably looking for Force and Negation. Dead and Gone doesn't do anything here. 
So I don't think they have anything at one mana that messes us up. It's like has to be a force of negation. Doesn't look like they have it. And we get to uh kill them on the crackback. Um I didn't have to block with the Ragavan, but it's really not doing anything for me, so I might as well save like the one point of damage. Like they're gonna be dead regardless, so Ragavan's just like a stepping stone. The damage from Ragavan doesn't matter. Mm. Mm. So sideboarding against rhinos. Look. While I'm over here yawning. The fluster storms, all three fluster storms, two spell pierce, hundred percent coming in. Uh, and then the two engineered explosives are coming in. So that's like three fluster storm, two spell pierce, and the two terminates of two engineered explosives. And boarding out stuff like lightning bolt that doesn't kill a rhino. And terminate because it's very, very inefficient at killing a rhino. But if your concern is more of like the fury endurance side, then leaving in terminate's fine. Uh, board out some ragavans, especially on the draw because they do not survive very well. Uh, they're getting blown up by rhinos or dead and gone, uh, fire and ice, like embarrassingly bad so we cut those a reasonably sized ledger shredder is not bad it's like once you get two counters on it it can just stand in front of a rhino that's very important um opponent fetches out a tap steam vents and does nothing my guess is that they either like Meant to get a green source to suspend rhinos or just like weren't paying attention. Because even if, if you're getting a tap land, just get a triome. Unless all their triomes are in hand. Then turn two, suspend rhino and dead and gone. So maybe I am the idiot. <laughs> maybe I don't know what's going on. This is kind of what I'm talking about with uh, Ledger Shredder is just getting up to a 3-5. If my opponent puts a Cascade spell on the stack here, then I get another Shredder trigger. So I know the Shredder should get up to a 3-5. Get rid of the Heat because I've got E that's going to wipe up Rhinos. So the Heat doesn't really matter. Thoughtsies to clean up everything else on board. Um, I think I made another slight mistake here. I think that I should not have made this attack. And the reason is, this is like the one turn I've got shields down uh, because I can't afford to take 10 damage on the crackback from two rhinos and a shardless agent. So I have to blow up the EE if I attack. But if I don't attack, then I can always like kill a rhino and take six. That's fine. And if my opponent's two blind draws were like, Fury, or they have Fury, if they draw a red card and evoke it, kill the Ledger Shredder, like, that's okay. My opponent's empty-handed, I've got an EE for Rhinos. Uh, but instead, I go for the attack, crack the EE, so obviously they top deck a second set of Rhinos. And I'm sitting here with this Flusterstorm in hand like an idiot, when I should have just, like, Played uh, the EE past the turn, and I could like EE into turn or something if I really wanted to EE, or I could just hold up Flusterstorm and like not really be in 
a whole lot of trouble for anything. So Chandler has to attack. Just kind of hoping our opponent finds something we can interact with. They put footfalls on the stack, so we're going to double spell and try to get them to, like, tap out. And that's probably stupid decision number two is, like, how much do I care about this Fury? Uh, they can't cast it this turn. Maybe they cast it next turn. But I decided to keep the shadow. And of course, like in in true fashion, our opponent top decks like basically the only thing, either ice or brazen borrower that punishes us for tapping or for getting rid of that fluster storm. So two really big decisions there that ended up costing us that game. Um, I'm a little bit less upset about the discarding Flusterstorm one because I wanted the shadow to come down, be able to survive a fury, stand in front of a rhino and kind of force them to like commit that fury to the channeler. And I just get like two big beefy dudes on board. Um, so a little bit less upset about that one, but I'm really upset at myself for the uh, the blow up, the attack with Shredder blow up EE line because I just didn't need to do that. Like I was not in a position where I had to attack. Um, I wasn't in a position where I was like dead to hand or dead to known information. The only thing I put myself in trouble with is off the top of their deck. And I had that covered with the, uh, fluster storms and just like kind of through that one. So on to game number three, uh, no real changes. I think I brought back in like a heat for a Ragavan or Ragavan for a heat, something like that. Nothing major. It's on the play. On the play, I want less kill spells for rhinos and more counter spells for for footballs. Good hand. Go like turn one channeler, turn two shredder plus E on zero, ditch the Kroxa for free. Uh, finding a bunch of shadows we don't really need. And now, now my concern is Blood Moon. Like, am I putting myself in a position where my opponent can just Blood Moon me? Uh, also kind of funny there that I played the Watery Grave tapped because I couldn't play the shadow if I shocked down to 13. And I didn't think that playing out a shadow was that important right now. Uh, obviously, if I had known I was going to... I didn't think playing two shadow was important because I don't want to be drawing more lands right now. How about that? And then I ended up drawing the land that would have gotten shadow online. But I kind of say, like, screw that. If our opponent has some Cascade and has some Rhinos, we'll just let them hit us and play two big Shadows. But instead, they have Endurance. Which is fine as well, because like, if my opponent hits me with an Endurance, then cool, I get to play out Shadows. If I want to. Finding Drown is good, so we'll just, like, play out one Shadow because I don't want them to have Land Fury kill my two Shadows. So if they want to, like, Land Fury decide between Ledger Shredder Shadow power to them, we'll take that.
and finding the second drown in the lock means I really want my opponent to commit to something like a fire so I can get more cards in their yard so that I can potentially hard cast a fury. So I'm attacking with the ledger shredder so they can put some damage on it and hopefully my opponent will cast like something I can interact with and get cards into their graveyard. But opponent is uh, too smart for us. They're going to put cards in their own graveyard and say, cool. Sounds good. And now we'll play out uh, a little bit more. Because like our opponent's kind of showing us that they don't have a Fury. And better yet, we have the ability to interact with a Fury now. So... Ready to my shredder, you got it. Blood Moon. Mystical Dispute. All right. So if they have like this into Fury, it's pretty annoying. But I've got, like, Rhinos covered with EEs, so I'm not really that scared of that. And if they do nothing, then I just get to get down Gigantha, and now I get to go back to casting everything. Uh, they've locked themselves out of blue, so they can't have Shardless Agent. They can't cast this Brazen Borrower. Again, like, don't care about rhinos. I'm fine in the face of that. And they just kind of scoop it up. Uh, so I'm assuming they didn't draw anything relevant. If they attacked at me with the rhinos, my probable block is something like shadow. Maybe like shadow, shadow, gigantha on one Rhino and let the other one through. So they deal four to me, put me down to eight. My shadows become five fives. Um, so even if they put all the damage on a shadow, they don't kill it. They don't kill the Gigantha. If they follow it up with a Fury, they get to kill like Gigantha. Maybe Gigantha and one shadow, depending on how they assign damage. Uh, they'd have to go like, Three and no, they couldn't even kill Gigantha and a shadow. That'd be pretty fine. And if they do anything to kill Gigantha, it just means I have like two big shadows on board alive and I get to e blow up the rhinos, blah, blah, blah. Whole bunch of stuff. Doesn't matter. Had a good board presence when Blood Moon came down. So that's kind of like the deciding factor. Uh, end up that league five and zero. Oh. Here's the list again. I'll have a link to it down below. Uh, thoughts on the list. One, I didn't see Croxa nearly as much as I wanted to. We've been playing three in a lot of our leagues recently, and I feel like I'm seeing it fairly often. Uh, but here, there were a lot of times I wanted to see it and didn't. And that's kind of problematic for your, like, big payoff. Uh, so even with Channeler in the deck, still didn't feel like I was getting to Kropsa. Uh I didn't feel a lot of need for 20th land. I actually got mana screwed less with 19 lands than I've been getting with 20. So that was interesting. Cutting down on the Ledger Shredders was fine. Dragon's Rage Channeler did help in some of the unfair matchups. It, uh, we saw it against, like, Living End. It looked okay. Uh, it was kind of whatever against Merc Tide. It was... I don't think we saw it against Rhinos. We might have. I can't remember. Uh, but, like... I don't think the clock for Channeler really matters that much. I don't think it really accelerated any games. And I don't think we did a ton of surveilling off of it that mattered. 
We've never been to Croak's Officer Vale. And... I guess there were like a couple surveils that maybe mattered. But I don't think they like single-handedly won or lost a game. Just like a little bit of value here and there. Like, hey, I've I've got a land drop in hand. I'll ditch this land on top. I need to draw the next land anyway at some point, but I don't need it right now. Uh Drown in the Lock. I wish I had the fourth drown, because obviously I ran into both Rhinos and Living In, which Drown and Lock is like fantastic against. So that was kind of unfortunate. Um uh, the fourth ledger shredder I didn't really miss. Like I've liked the fourth ledger shredder with three Kroxa because you end up drawing an extra one more often than you want. So ditching it to a server to a knife trigger is nice. But ledger shredder as a clock isn't the most relevant. It is good against Merc Tide, though. Like, I think Ledger Treader Croaksa are super, super good against Merc Tide, having both of those. Uh, so that's at least something to keep an eye on. Dress Down didn't really do anything. Spell Pierce and Fluster Storm were good since we ran into multiple Cascade decks and Blue White Control. Kaito looked like an all star that league. Kaito against Merc Tide and Blue White Control uh, showed up. Couldn't be removed. Drew multiple cards against both of them. Really, really good with that. Terminate was an all-star, especially against Merc Tide. EE e. looked great. Never saw Hearse. And that's like one of my things with Hearse right now is if I'm so heavy on the counter spells, then I don't really care about Hearse against like Living End. But Hearse is a value grave hate piece against things like Scam is super, super nice. Against Ren and Six decks is nice. So, I like Hearse, but I don't want Hearse, but it's probably good to have Hearse. Haven't really come to a conclusion about whether or not I want to run the card or not. Uh, and then finally, like the Basic Island. I don't think there was a time where we had Basic Island that we couldn't escape Kroxa anyway. But there was a time against Murktide where I had a Croaks in the graveyard, three lands, drew a blue fetch. I would have liked to get the basic island to play around Blood Moon, but ended up getting like a shock land instead to have the mana to escape Croaks. So that was maybe about the most um, most tension I felt from the island. Other than that, uh, hopefully you learned something from this league. Uh, this has been kind of fun recently, so give it a shot if you're looking for an idea for Shadow. Otherwise, catch y'all live on stream, and yeah, enjoy the league. Uh, have, enjoy some good food and company. Catch y'all back later. Adios.